for joining. Welcome to the R Studio Enterprise Community Meetup. I'm Rachel Dempsey, actually calling in from Connecticut today. We are streaming out to LinkedIn and YouTube Live. If you've just joined now, feel free to introduce yourselves through the chat window and say hello, maybe where you're calling in from. For today's meetup, we're joined by Saim Galani, founder of the Sports Dataverse. The Sports Dataverse is a set of open source sports data packages that work in harmony because they share common data representations and API design. Just a few uh, notes during the meetup, you will be able to ask questions. Um, you can either put them into LinkedIn where you're watching or on YouTube. We also have a Slido link that I'll share in the chat so you can ask questions anonymously as well. Um, but uh, just so you know, if you do ask questions, you'll be part of the recording as well. So right when the meetup is over, the recording will be shared to YouTube, which is one of the nice things of doing it on YouTube Live. It's there immediately. Um, but for anybody who is joining this meetup group for the first time, this is a friendly and open meetup environment for teams to share use cases, teach lessons learned, and just meet each other and, and ask questions. So thank you all for making this a welcoming community. Together, we're dedicated to providing an inclusive and open environment for everyone. So we wanna create spaces where everybody can participate and we can hear from you all, regardless of your level of experience or area of work too. Um, but with that, thank you again for joining us. I would love to introduce Saim and pull him up on stage here virtually. Uh, Saim Galani is the Director of Data Science and Engineering for the Houston Rockets and the founder of the Sports Dataverse. Saim, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. I am very grateful for the opportunity to talk about the Sports Dataverse. <coughs> um, and we, we consider it an initiative because everything is kind of in a constant state of a work in progress to both make things like make resources exist and then maintain them to a simple standard. Um, the topic of the conversation is generally going to be about uh, how the sports Dataverse is trying to develop uh, lasting solutions for accessing sports data um, and creating analytics based on the uh, open source data we have available and uh, creating <clears throat> um, public utilities for the community to both use and enhance um, as research progresses. And so the main goals are for us to be creating a, you know, high standard uh, data resources for the sports analytics community. Um, in addition, creating pathways to make the uh, sports analytics industry more diverse, inclusive, and accessible. That's that's the primary goal here, is to lower the um, standard learning curve that goes into actually making uh, progress in um, becoming a competitive candidate in the sports analytics field. Um, and so some of the solutions we brought about are uh, building an extensive set of open source uh, sports data repositories, um, and then creating the packages to um, load the data from Python, R, and Node. Uh, we'll be primarily focusing on the R packages, with, given that this is an R Studio presentation. <coughs> um, and establishing the bench of developers from diverse backgrounds uh, to spearhead projects and make contributions within the um, the actual packages within the sports dataverse. And most important, well, the, the, the second prong of this goal is to bring women's sports data analytics um, research on par with the same level of uh, resources available um, within the public so, within the public space. Uh, and like just generally make more strides to make uh, the analytics space a little bit more equitable for both sides. Um, so 
as uh, Rachel mentioned, I'm the lead engineer for the Sports Adiverse. I am an ML engineer by trade. Uh, I'm currently working for the Houston Rockets as the director of data science and engineering. I have previously worked in healthcare uh, and uh, medical malpractice, freight, freight supply, um, as well as online uh, data science course development. And most recently, I was working for Deloitte uh, as a consultant in uh, cybersecurity. Uh, I think the roundabout way of how I got into sports analytics, uh, the open source side anyway, I've always been into sports analytics since uh, basically I found out that they were tracking numbers in sports. <laughs> that was uh, my first um, foray into it. And then as I got into the open source space, I found the need to uh, work um, with college football data for while I was uh, contributing to Tomahawk Nation the FSU SB Nation site uh, covering the uh, Florida State Seminoles, which is where I'm from. Uh, I'm born and raised in Tallahassee. I <laughs> bleed guard and gold for sure. Um, and so that's how I started contributing to my first open source sports project with uh, Maya Pan Subaya and uh, Parker Fleming, uh, CFB Scraper, which later became CFB Fast R. Uh, modeled after the NFL Fast R and NFL Verse. So we call it an initiative um, because it's more a goal than it is anything else. Just to bring together an incredibly remarkable set of people who can code at a high level and can follow um, standard guidelines for you know good 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 code practice. Uh, and the kind of people that can actually create reproducible and durable pipelines, uh, data pipelines for the entire community to benefit from. Because the idea, we all in the sports analytics industry and any data analytics industry will, <clears throat> will have to create data pipelines in order to do modeling. And so that's the first step of our um, initiative is how do we make getting sports data easy? Um, and could we get further if we actually built the data infrastructure together so that we all have reproduce, like being able to validate models quicker um, using standard open um, data sets will allow us to create better um, create better pro prototypes that are that can be easily validated. Um, so the sports dataverse is just basically an organization trying to make the it I mean the sports dataverse is several things and it, they are all, it's a basically a catch-all term for the community of people that support the sports dataverse. Um, and so we're we are nothing without our uh, development team. Very grateful for the contributions that everybody makes to um, the packages and, and data repositories and pipelines that, that really make the entire thing run. And so the community is the piece that both develops the projects, maintains it, and mentors younger developers. And these will hopefully in turn turn into future maintainers and developers of further research and packages within the uh, sports dataverse and just generally in the sports analytics uh, domain and uh, broadly. And these, uh, these packages all typically operate from um, at least the data fetching side of their they typically will uh, have corresponding data repositories, which allow for the fast loading of our data at basically whatever speed, like at the limitation of your internet connection and uh, available RAM. Um, we've created uh, one of the largest open source sports data resources, given that it's over uh, 250 gigabytes produced 
in various formats. Um, and that's just from the four or five packages that I, or four or five sports slash sports leagues that I've worked on. Um, others have also contributed significant uh, amounts of data and comprehensive data. It's incredible to see um, the amount of, we could fit within the, the um, GitHub free limits. It's uh, truly incredible. And so I think the thing that makes um, the sports dataverse relatively more appealing beyond just having like fast pre-scraped data is that the, the function names are, they follow pattern and they tell you where the data is coming from uh, based on the function name. If it's starting with a load, a build, or an update, it is using the data resources uh, created by the package developers. Um, and if it's directly interacting with a website, it will be give you an indication that it's like ESPN data, NBA uh, stats API, the NCAA website. These are all assumed to be uh, get functions. So we provide the, the access to these functions, but they should be used carefully using a proper uh, rests in between. Be polite when you're scraping with those functions because you are directly interacting with a uh, um, open data source. And so what makes the uh, sports dataverse packages um, a bit more interesting, or rather a bit more mm, attractive than mo most uh, scraper packages is the fact that they are backed by package uh, uh, data package, like data repositories, um, which allow loading for um, pre-scraped data. And so this is a allows for like much faster access and also um, standardized pipelines for both ingest and modeling. Um, so you can use your starting point as just loading from the package uh, uh, data repositories and then build pipelines on top of that, submit a pull request to our data, our data repository and have your models become part of the pipeline and you know can be used in summaries and you can basically create um verified open source uh models which i think is the next step towards uh the next phase of the the sports dataverse and so we can talk about um the various packages within uh, the sports dataverse. The, I'm only going to focus on a couple just because they are uh, readily available on CRAN and I also wrote them. I have, <laughs> I've actually had quite a rough weekend uh, coming back from uh, Houston. We just got done with the NBA draft and I have returned home to find that my uh, home PCs are all fried. And so where I had a lot of my um, presentation written but not pushed, I am uh, locked out of my I'm locked out of my uh, PC. And so I'm having to use a, a different computer to create I had to use it to create this uh, presentation. And so I was not able to um, follow the uh, guideline I'd set in the abstract of this presentation of uh, um, going through all the various packages, or, uh, all the various functions added to WeHoop. Uh, it just became a full NBA, uh, WNBA stats API scraper, added 104 functions, um, and it brings it on par to every, um, uh, every, Available function within Hoopar, 
which also covers the NBA stats API. So wherever there's available data for the WNBA, it will have all the functions that um, exist. And so this, uh, this is just a simple installation from uh, uh, Cloud ER. And let's demonstrate quickly uh, how the function namings allows you for easy um, transference of knowledge between each of the different packages. So the once we load the libraries, you'll notice that whenever we use the load functions, it'll be load the sport league, which is college football, and then play by play, and then the year. And it can be a vector of years. It uh, does not care. For NFL, I would highly recommend using the NFL verse and NFL fast R. We basically took the idea of NFL fast R and the NFL verse and applied it um, very successfully to create basically identical frameworks for um, loading um, data from for various sports. From basically, we took the idea of the NFL verse and applied it to the college football, NBA, WNBA, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, the Premier Hockey Federation, the NHL. Um, is that all of them? <laughs> and uh, well, with more to follow. And others have followed in this example. Um, the uh, World Football R by uh, Jason Zivkovic. He is uh, also working on something very similar to make loading easy from uh, World Football R, an excellent uh, soccer package within the sports dataverse. Um, and so for men's college basketball and women's college basketball, it's just the same function, but you're just changing it to men's basketball, women's ba basketball. And this is a college, collegiate. And then similarly, it is this simple. It does not take a you know, rocket scientist to figure out this naming convention. I try to make it as foolproof and easily um, accessible as possible just by, if you know how one of these, like one of these packages works in terms of how their function naming works, you will have a much easier time understanding what is going on in each of the different packages. And for the same idea um, for fast R hockey, you can load the NHL play-by-play, -play, and you can load the Premier Hockey Federation play-by-play. -play. And this is uh, just, honestly, this is already out of, it, out of date since I uh, last posted it. But basically, these are a subset of the packages uh, within the sports dataverse. We have, I think, seven packages on CRAN right now. CFB, Fast R, Hoop R, We Hoop. Baseball R, Fast R Hockey, World Football R, and Torvik, uh, which is Bart Torvik uh, scraping his website. And I just, uh, I haven't even announced, but uh, Odds API R is also <laughs> on uh, CRAN. Oh, Sporty R, that's the other one that I, I forgot. Um, we basically have an incredible number of people to thank uh, as part of this initiative. Um, the community of developers that help, you know, maintain all of these different packages are extremely valuable. Um, and I very much appreciate all their help. Uh, and the uh, sports dataverse the front end of the sports adverse is eventually going to look something like a uh, game on paper, which is a, uh, um, yeah, which is basically using the college football endpoints of the, uh, 
of the various packages to generate entire stats pages uh, for live games. Like this. And we can see there's win probability, expected points added, uh, various aggregations of the team level. These are the basic ideas that we can continue to develop with uh, support from the community and driven developers. Uh, so just as an example, I asked somebody to uh, produce a Shiny app using uh, one of our packages, um, the WeHoo, because I was uh, short on time and I wasn't going to be able to get everything done. And so he was able to throw this together in 60, 60 minutes. Um, a pretty incredible uh, like very quick application that can be easily adapted to others. Um, come on. Here we go. While it's pulling up, just wanted to remind everyone, if you want to ask questions, you can just ask them in LinkedIn or YouTube where you're watching, or you can use the the Slido link too. I'll just put it on the screen for a second here. <laughs> um, so I see a question from a good friend. Uh, Robert Frey is asking, what currently is holding baseball R from loading full seasons of play-by-play -play data? Um, there's honestly no issue with trying to make it happen other than my own personal availability. That's literally it. I have so much that I'm like actively working on. And uh, well, things will fall short, sort of short if uh, we don't have enough other committed people to just take the reins and actually make it happen. It's not, it's just a matter of uh, getting more people familiar with the infrastructure of how the entire organization works. We've had a lot of, uh, you know, difficult to navigate changes for anybody who has been new as I've been rapidly setting up all these different um, repositories and organizations, getting everybody coordinated, figuring out who actually uh, uh, is a GitHub contributor, and then allowing them the space to learn how to do it. <laughs> I'm not perfect about being a uh, uh, proactive leader on every single uh, piece of this, but I'm just trying my best, I promise. <laughs> um, and it's just like, it's a challenge. I've been learning all of this as I've been going and it's not, it's not always easy. Because I I'm not that good of a programmer. I'll just be honest with you. <laughs> I didn't really learn R until about grad school, and that was uh, only a few years back. And now I have five, six authorships on CRAN packages. So it's it's been a uh, very interesting challenge to get all this worked out. <laughs> um, so somebody asked, uh, what significant improvement do you see or want to see to the sports of Dataverse accomplishing in the next year? So this is an excellent question because it's something I think about a lot and have uh, trouble prioritizing where I want the changes to happen most. Because there's, you know, there's the hard goals, which is, hey, 
can we make this model happen and uh, make it reproducible and make it run every night so that it's updated daily? But moreover, I think my biggest goal is, you know, creating the kind of organization, open source organization that becomes um, the first stop for um, teams and companies in the sports analytics space who are looking for developers and analysts and data scientists and machine learning engineers and everything in between, because you can clearly see that they are making important contributions to the actual community and, you know, being helpful within the community to make it better for everybody. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for all that you do for the community. And I see people are commenting that in the, the chat as well. And a lot of love for the sports dataverse. I didn't want to interrupt and start asking questions if you were still um, going through parts of the presentation, but I see there are a lot that are coming in too. So you just let me know when. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fine to take questions wherever. Um, I honestly, I had so much planned and I have stuff I can show you that just isn't quite ready. Um, but basically the presentation I was supposed to do today was going to be on um, building regularized adjusted plus minus models for the WNBA. And so there's a, I would expect by version um, 2.0 of WeHoop that there will be um, regularized adjustment plus minus metrics available for players going back to at least 2015. Um, wherever we can get lineups data, it's already, the data is available in the data repository. I just have to make uh, changes to bring it into the package through the package functions. Uh, but basically, yeah, the data is all there. We have it all worked out. Just need to make a, a regularized adjustment plus minus model, and then we are in business, which is nice. That's a, it's a very um, reasonable standard of a metric that everybody agrees is at least uh, not noise. <laughs> and so we're excited about that. Um, I can pull, um, I'll pull a few of the questions over that are coming over on YouTube as well. Um, but I see Jeff had asked, is there anything special about the relationship between the sports dataverse in Python and R? Are they effectively the same initiative? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I trimmed <coughs> I trimmed a <coughs> I trimmed a bunch of the um, Python and um, Node parts out of this presentation, um, but there's simultaneous efforts being made in um, both Python and Node to make the um, at at the very least for the Node version the scraper uh, pack the scraper level functions available as uh, node functions, as well as the Python having the exact same capabilities as both loading and uh, scraping, with the additional benefit of it being only one package um, because of moduling within the package, making it a little bit more convenient. Um, it, there's only one package on the sports dataverse uh, Python side. And well, I shouldn't say that there is one other package that uh, individual contributors make, and I need to figure out a better way to streamline um, integrating other people's work on the Python side. That's honestly the biggest hang up from it becoming um, just as uh, robust in its implementation. Thank you. I see Keith asked a great question over on Slido about how people can contribute. Um, Keith had said, how about sports outside of North America, like European ice hockey or rugby? How can we contribute here? Uh, yeah, this is um, probably my own fault, <laughs> given that uh, I basically 
the people I've brought in for the most part, it's like 95% North Americans and then 5% people from around the uh, globe. And that's somewhat by design, somewhat by just simple geography and not knowing everybody in the community. <laughs> and so we, uh, we've been definitely making some outreach and that's um, just as far as specific uh, examples of non-North American sports, uh, World Football R is a uh, pretty vast covering uh, soccer package. Though, if somebody would want to make contributions on, say, something like rugby or um, uh, European ice hockey, I would suggest European ice hockey would go with Fast R hockey. So if you want to, if you were interested on the hockey side, I'm trying to bring sports into one package, um, you know, divided by like leagues, ideally to make it a minimum number of package names you have to remember. Like I only want one hockey package. I only want one basketball package, ideally. But given the, the um, if I were to combine We Hoop and Hoop R, it would turn into a... 350 pack 350 function package of just a monstrosity that I you know I I don't want to anger uh, Brian Ripley like just to be honest <laughs> and it would be incredibly unmaintainable very quickly uh, that's how things get taken off of cran and it's just wiser to limit the scope as much as possible uh, but I'm very open to uh, people uh, talking to me about uh, contributing on non-North American sports. I am very into it. I just don't have the personal um, knowledge of and like understanding of <laughs> the various uh, leagues that exist outside of the United States and North America. Uh, so very open to learn, very open to accept contributions. Uh, and like I, this was just an idea that lots of people in this community have had and i just tried to execute it and as i've tried to execute it i've been like wait i need to change how i do this every step of the way <laughs> and it's just a constant learning process i like for example um jackie tran she made a very wonderful uh, um women's national basketball league of Australia women's basketball package. Um, and I did not know that league existed. So I had to, um, well, we have to figure out how to make um, more of a data accessible through these packages uh, to give it broader coverage because I really want there to be um, equitable coverage across like women's sports and like not just North Americans like leagues. I, I focused there because I knew there was a lot of data there. Um, and I also knew what the websites were. <laughs> that's a, that's basically how this whole deal works. Um, somebody's like, Hey, we should scrape this resource and somebody does it. And we just figure out how to cobble it all together into a useful format. Awesome. And, and so I'm just, um, for people who are interested in contributing, is it best to go through the Sports Dataverse website or through GitHub, or what's the best way to get in touch with people? Um, both the, uh, like, the easiest way to get our attention is first to, uh, you know, message myself on uh, Twitter, Sime Gilani, uh, or the Sports Dataverse um, uh, Twitter, also at Sports Dataverse or the CFB Fast R one if you're looking for something college football specific. But and then as well as anybody you know to be affiliated through the Get Help organization, um, start talking to us. That's all. That's all it takes. And you will become. We'll invite you to our community and have um, a talk about how to bring in whatever idea you have. Uh, it's. I'm not super. Uh, picky. I, I just, I just like, we just have to talk about it and we have to make it happen. That is just like a, it's a process of talking about it. 
and uh, bringing together a plan and making it making it work. That's great. Um, I see Samra asked a question, which I know comes up in a bunch of data science hangouts as well. I want to pursue a career in sports analytics. What resources do you recommend? Mathletics, one. <laughs> uh, excellent book um, for modeling. And uh, if you haven't read Basketball on Paper by uh, Dean Oliver, excellent uh, introductory tutorial. And then uh, a very recent addition to my collection, The Mid-Range Theory uh, by Seth Bartnow. It, I mean, I, I primarily focused on basketball, but there's an incredible number of resources. Uh, and just like in general, football analytics has uh, come a long way. I, I would start by, you know, following the introductory tutorials from various people in the sports dataverse, um, like in the packages, like CFB Fast R has seven, eight vignettes and a bunch of different examples about how you can get started. Everybody always puts their work out on Twitter. That's a great way to get exposure. Um, start putting your work out there. Like, you don't always have to be, uh, you know, mind-blowingly brilliant. Like, I, I just started putting out, like, logo plots, like everybody else. And then I started becoming a package developer. And things just kind of took off from there until I became one of the people that's produced the most open source packages. I It started somewhere. I was nowhere. I started doing open source development in February of 2020. Yeah. So like two and a half years later, and I'm now the director of data science for an NBA team. I, it's, it's really just a matter of like working hard, putting your work out there, having people see it and know you in return. Like you have, it's, it's one thing to know. Um, it's one thing who, you know, it's another thing who knows you, like you have to be able to put yourself out there in order to have like the name recognition, like, oh yeah, I remember this person because of this analysis they did. Um, an incredibly valuable way to promote your own work and get feedback on your work is using Twitter, make analyses, like put a blog post up, get some feedback. Like there's so many people who are willing to help, especially if you start like putting it in front of us. <laughs> uh, incredibly, uh, yeah, I can't understate how important that piece of this is that we don't talk about enough. I love that. Just start sharing your work. Um, I see there's quite a few other questions coming in from uh, LinkedIn and YouTube. One is, what are some of the plug and play analysis or functions that these packages have? Oh, uh, so basically, uh, the probably the most developed one is uh, CFB FastR because we that was initially um, modeled after after uh, NFL scra scraper uh, written by Ron Yurko, Sam Ventura, and uh, Maxim Horowitz, uh, which uh, in turn was part of the uh, Open War uh, uh, NFL paper, which I highly recommend reading. Um, Basically, you can add uh, pipelines to any of the existing play-by-play -play functions to get um, you know various levels of expected points added and uh, win probability metrics. Not all the packages have them. Uh, basically, I the presentation today was actually supposed to be me developing a new metric for uh, women's college or women's. Uh, National Basketball Association, um, because that's basically the next phase of this. A lot of it is data get functions um, or data get and then compiled into a 
loadable data set. But the goal is for people to um, create pipelines on top of it and then submit those pipelines to us to incorporate into our data repositories and then um, in turn be made available to end users um, through the package functions. And so like that's that's really where the next part, piece of this goes. A lot of them, a lot of the packages fall into one of three categories, uh, not all of which exist yet. Um, there's the data scraping, which is uh, basically all of them right now. But uh, there's modeling uh, packages, which may just store models or you know methods to create models. And then there's data visualization um, packages like uh, CFP plot R or um, uh, MLB plot R or Sporty R, uh, which create allow you to create um, very useful visualizations or uh, tables, depending um, on what your goal is. But the real the real deal thing that I want to see get started in the next phase of the sports adverse, beyond just us like covering more sports and sports leagues, I want us to take the next step of incorporating other people's models that they want to contribute um, to the open source space so that they can become um, like a standardized method that everybody can reference. Like, hey, you know, this person made a, um, an adjusted plus minus model it takes these th certain things into effect. We can document it, and then you add it to our nightly data repository load for that sport league, however um, the pipeline works. And then it's made available for users on, you know, every time we run the nightly loads. Thank you. I see. I know we touched upon this already, but I see a lot of the questions coming in are focused around like tips for shifting into the space of sports analytics as well. But do you have any specific tips for shifting from a different industry into sports? Um, so yeah, I guess I should probably tell you a little bit more about myself. I, um, I was in healthcare analytics and on the actuarial side uh, and um, in medical malpractice briefly. Uh, just so like as an analyst where I wound up using a lot of uh, Excel, VBA, uh, SQL, and SAS. And learning SQL helped me a great deal. SAS is very useful as well. Um, but given that it's a paid software, I think uh, not the most useful in this space, given that so many of the data science solutions, um, you know, are using open source software. Uh, so I wound up getting a, um, getting some hands-on experience while I was working for startups in, um, in Python and R modeling. Um, and that was very useful and um, in turn getting into grad school. <laughs> Um, because that's where I went to uh, Georgia Tech, uh, their online uh, master in analytics program. Very exceptional program, very uh, affordable. And I learned a great deal of um, various programming methods, languages, techniques, frameworks, um, as well as the math behind it, which was an exceptionally um, valuable piece to my understanding of how everything works in, in stats like because you, you have to have both like you need to work on your programming skills and like just your breadth of understanding of how different pieces in the stack fit together and being able to manipulate data in those frameworks or languages and then being able to uh understand the stats and math that are useful for your um, data sets like being able to understand what your data is telling you, what it can do, what it can't do, um, as far as building models that are useful is the, that's that's like the bread and butter of how you become a valuable data scientist. 
Thank you. I see that there are a lot of people commenting in the chat or asking if other people from the community are interested in working with certain sports data, like volleyball data, for example. Um, and so I did just want to take a second to call out that this channel exists. Um, so they're on the R for Data Science Online Learning Slack community. There's a channel called Chat Sports Analytics. But I thought it could be a good place for people to connect even after the meetup too. Yeah. Um, so just wanted to leave that up there. That's the link to join, just r4ds.io slash join. And the specific channel itself is the one in blue there. Yes, yeah, so we actually do have a, a, a private Discord that we invite people to, in spite of our like, um, you know, open and accessible uh, mantra, we try to keep the conversation to people who are actually trying to help with the packages so we don't have a fully open um, uh, community <laughs> as far as like talking to us every single day and working on packages directly with us. Um, but it's not super hard to get an invite as long as you're about it. <laughs> You just have to talk to me about it, show me your GitHub, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> awesome. So reach out on the Sports Dataverse Twitter, right? Yes, I am. Awesome. Um, this isn't really a question, but I really love this comment. The anonymous comment on Slido was, this is the truest demonstration of you don't need to be the most like elite programmer or do it all alone to make a really useful package. So thanks for for sharing that too. I appreciate that because a lot of days I'm just like, wow, I can't believe anything I write works. <laughs> and like people find it useful. All right. Fantastic. Um, but it's true. You really don't have to be, you know, elite to make a difference. You know, because as long as you ex you try and execute an idea, doesn't matter if your code is always the fastest. It's nice if it is. But if you're just trying to get a job done and make it durable, sometimes that's speed is not always the answer. A few other questions that are coming through is um, one is, are any of those packages, are they providing real time data or is it just batch mode after every single game is over? Uh, I believe pretty much all of them are all of the R packages have a um, interface directly to the uh, website source that they pull the loaded data from. So basically, um, what we wind up doing is uh, the data repositories essentially work that we scrape data from one of the websites that's included within the uh, package, usually uh, I think the minimum standard is we usually have a, an ESPN for a uh, version of the play-by-play -play player box and team boxes. Um, and that's a compiled at the season level. Uh, and so that is usually done through um, package functions. And like we just run it every single night uh, to make sure it's updated with the most recent data. And so they, if, as long as it's available on their website live, then it's available through the package live, if that makes sense. Because we're almost always in, directly interacting with their APIs as they're live. Great, thank you. Um, I also just wanted to take a second in this platform to share that I know the Women in Sports Data Symposium yeah. is coming up too on August 20th. Um, and I just put the Twitter account to the symposium there that you can follow if you're interested in, in getting involved as well. They're, like We are highly supportive of them. Um, uh, they are doing excellent things. It's going to be a fantastic conference. Please attend. Uh, and we are happy to uh, discuss sponsoring if you need help getting there. That's great. Yeah, it, lo it looks amazing. 
Um, so a few other questions. I myself am not sure exactly what this question means, but what would uh, be your opinion about DFTS density functional theory as an application? I'm not sure no if idea. that relates to a specific package or not. So I, I just wanted to ask yeah. it. Okay. We can right. see, we can save that one. And if anyone has some thoughts on it, feel free to, to share it in the, um, the chat too. Uh, so basically, um, I see this question from Rodrigo from YouTube. Uh, is Sports Ediverse focused only on providing access to, oh wait, we, we did cover some of this. Um, it would be helpful if anybody wants to make like useful reporting that they would like to be run every night. Um, we are always willing to accept that sort of stuff, especially if it's um, something that can be updated every night. That'd be good. Yep. Awesome. Um, Let me um, jump over to the Slido too. And just a, a reminder, if you did want to ask any anonymous questions, you can put them there on, on Slido as well. I'll just put the link up again. And sorry, I'm a little all over the place trying to get them from YouTube and LinkedIn and Slido all at once. But I think covered the majority of the questions. Um, someone had asked about um, some of those books that you had recommended. Do you know if any of them are available, like in online free versions as well, kind of like how the R for Data Science book is? I cannot say that I do. Yep. I also really like the people who have made these books, so I would not. Uh, <laughs> I would encourage you to support them if you can, um, but I honestly don't know of any uh, free versions. Yeah, uh, it's worth checking out. Um, um, Constantine no, uh, Pellegrinus is a sports uh, analytics coursework that he's provided, because I'm sure he's provided a bunch of excerpts for um, from the book during those course notes and lectures. Great, thank you. Um, one other question was, could this package be utilized for prediction purposes? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about a specific package, but in theory, that's exactly what all of these are for. <laughs> um, Right now, they're mostly uh, just pulling in data as it comes from websites, and there's not much being done to enhance it. I'm just trying to get the data ingest going uh, and made available so that you, the user, and like contributor, potential contributor to the sports dataverse, could then build a pipeline and be like, hey, if you run these two functions, you can get this set of reporting and modeling done. Um, here's how you would train that model. Here's a proof of concept of how it works. Please add it and you know you make a pull request to us uh, or just talk to us about it, how you would get it incorporated to the um, broader community and package. And that's, that's, that's the next phase. We want that, please. I'm muted, sorry. Eugene, I see um, had asked, it looks like you have quite the trophy cabinet behind you, Sign. Which are your sports? Math. All, like, math, yeah, <laughs> 100%. Love it. Another question that I realized I had missed from earlier is, what are some newer aspects of data analytics in the MBA that excite you? Well, there's a lot more uh, stat companies now that are providing MBA uh, data. Um, and that's uh, always an exciting opportunity to like learn from, or, like get a, get a check on yourself from, you know, various other uh, very smart analysts in the field, uh, which is great as well as like there's actual opportunities for new data that's being provided to us from existing providers, um, whether it be raw tracking data from either second spectrum or um, 
zealous using spec and spectrum data, um, stats reform. There, there's a bunch of people that are providing more and more interesting data that you have to become adept, adept at building these pipelines because that's the work you have to do. <laughs> like the entire purpose of why I think this is a very good route for people to learn the skills they absolutely need on the job uh, for working in sports analytics is you're going to get new data sources. You're going to have to build data pipelines. But you need to be able to do it fast. And you got to make them durable, make sure they don't break, and learn how to make them um, basically work no matter what. Um, and so that that means working with tracking data from, you know, whether it be provided to you or creating your own tracking data using computer vision model modeling um, and extracting, you know, coordinate systems. Just like learning how to work with very large data sets is uh, the name of the game. Because at the end of the day, you're you're going to be working with continuously bigger data sets the more data you are provided. I just want to say, if I have missed anyone's question, feel free to add it into the chat again, <laughs> just to make sure that I see it here. I know we're getting to the top of the hour, but want to make sure I didn't miss any. Oh, yeah. Um, just on the, uh, the baseball R side, the person who actually taught me the most about uh, both baseball and uh, working with R is Robert Frey who uh, asked the first question at the top of the hour. Um, his YouTube channel was actually very instrumental for me learning how to uh, build a scraper package um, because he shows you an incredible, in incredible amounts of detail how to go about doing it. And I, I would highly recommend it. He posted his um, YouTube page in the, in the chat. That's, I literally incorporated his work into um, Baseball R and I learned it from watching his YouTube page and I became an, a co-author of Baseball R as a result. It's just like a crazy uh, roundabout way of like taking someone else's idea, making it more functional and, you know, being recognized for that. <laughs> like making like uh, concrete contributions to the open source uh, community. It's just like little ideas like that will, um, make you beloved to me, at least. <laughs> I would appreciate it. That's great. And I, I put it on the screen here, but it doesn't let you click. So um, if anyone wants to copy and paste from the chat and reshare, or if Robert, you want to share again, that would be really helpful too. Let's see. Just... Give me a second here to scroll through and see if there are other questions that we missed as well. Um, I do also want to just say if people are going to be at the R Studio conference later in July, we will have a birds of a feather group for sports analytics community as well. So it might be great to meet some people there and, and connect ahead of that too. Uh, let's see, any other questions you see? Oh, one other one. I see Austin just asked, how do you get your team to align and follow with your metrics? Any challenges there or are team senior leaders more aligned with data analytics lately? Well, I work in the best place for that, <laughs> like in the NBA, at least like uh, analytics and data scientists are highly respected in our organization. Um, they are always asking about modeling. And I think it's incredible that this level of understanding exists throughout the organization. It's not just at the top. It's even scouts are asking about the different like statistical techniques and modeling because they're incorporating it as like shortcuts to what they know to look for. Um, and you continuously get more and more benefits from actually um, 
having a top-down understanding within your organization about uh, analytics and metrics, like what's useful, what's not. It, it like make it cuts down your search time on you know your search time to insight by an incredible amount. It's just it's so very useful, and everybody should be doing it. And I'm very grateful to be in a place where it is respected and understood as valuable. Uh, it's, yeah, you can't exist without it anymore. Um, you're just giving up too much of an advantage. Okay, I know we're a minute over, so I think we have time for one or two more questions, if that's okay. Um, but also just want to let people know, if you're on and listening and you're hiring in the sports industry or actually in any <laughs> industry and want to share your role in the chat, feel free to do so. Um, that's perfectly okay as well. Um, but the other question was from Jeff. It said, yeah, uh, great question. Time, in your opinion, is sports analytics community stronger in R or Python? So the open source community is a lot stronger in, in R in part because of the excellent example set by you know, got people like Tan Ho uh, and and Sebastian Carl of the NFL verse, Ben Baldwin, and Te and and you know Tej Seth, people who are making all these tutorials using NFL verse data, and as a result, there's an incredible um, level of knowledge of R within the open source community, at least like and especially it's it's very public on Twitter, um, and so that 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 might be part of what's influencing my opinion on this. But the industry is uh, very much into Python because we're, like more often than not, it's already existing within their pipelines. Um, and more people that, more people that build applications are more familiar with, uh, with Python rather than R just because they're usually not building shiny applications uh, for, you know, internal websites uh, where they're displaying analytics. Mm -hmm. And so that usually um, necessitates or, you know, gives somewhat of a uh, preference to Python because you can easily, they already can build, they already know how to build the API, APIs using those functions in, in Python. But there's no reason you can't use it at the, definitely at the team level or even at the, um, you know, the stats company level for uh, Python, as long as it's not being, uh, you know, leveraged more than, you know, a several hundred times a second. Uh, and so you can definitely, it's help, very helpful to know both, actually. Like, I can't say uh, enough about, part of the reason I was a valuable candidate was because I knew both. Um, and being being flexible is is a very useful trait as your team gets smaller. Um, knowing knowing a little bit of everything is very valuable, but uh, if you if you have a CS background, I would say you probably need a lot less R. But if you're if you're coming from any background that isn't just purely CS. I would suggest like learning R first because it's a little bit easier. Um, the learning curve is not that strong, and there's tons of examples out there. That's the other thing is like you have just loads of open code from you know useful developers around here uh, who just are very generous with their time and efforts, and will show you like the community of R R the R R community is excellent. The people are the most helpful I've ever seen, and you can get to know them very quickly like it's not that big of a group <laughs> and so you learn like who can actually help me with this problem and you latch on to those people and it's like hey you are my friend now this is this is how it works love that well i have one more question i want to make sure we get to as well um and i see this was asked over on slido keith asked regarding players or teams following metrics what is the percentage split of data consumed during the game versus outside the game? 
I, I'm not going to answer that like as a percentage, but by far there's much more done. Um, there's much more done after the game or like outside of the game because you only have, you only have the bandwidth to focus on so many things during the game, especially if you're like trying to communicate it to uh, like the coaching staff. So that makes, you know, limiting the amount of noise you intake during a game to only the most useful things that they can uh, immediately make a decision on or are like expecting a uh, response on like, hey, should we foul here? Yes or no. And what's our best strategy in like this time frame margin? Uh, that sort of stuff. But it's not like they're looking at a, you know, an individual's plus minus during the game. Uh, as like, oh yeah, we need to get him out of here. He's a, he's a minus seven. No, 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 that's not a thing. Well, thank you so much, Sam, for your presentation and just being so open and, and honest with everyone and answering all these questions. This was great. I appreciate all the, the awesome questions in the chat as well, whether you're watching on LinkedIn or YouTube. Um, really appreciate everyone's time. I wanted to put the sports data versus Twitter up on the screen just one more time if people are interested in uh, collaborating or want to reach out. And uh, I would also recommend checking out our GitHub organization, uh, github.com slash sports dataverse. Because that's where you can see the actual developers who are involved and other people whose work you can check out and be like, oh, that's an awesome idea. Let me see if I can make that happen. Like, I can recreate that. Because um, that's, that's the best way I both meet people I want to meet and uh, learn things I didn't know. Like, I religiously follow people's GitHubs. I that is my primary form of social media. I actually don't like Twitter that much. I don't post that much, but I am definitely following you on GitHub. If <laughs> like, and that's that's where I learn so many new things that other people are working on. It's just a great way to pick up. It's a great way to stay uh, up to date on various techniques and like methodologies and, and just interesting ideas. Please. Do it. Good for you. <laughs> Perfect. I just shared it in the chat as well as on the screen here too. Um, but just want to say thank you again, Sam. I know you had uh, a lot of technical stuff going on with the computer as well to, this week too. So thank you for still joining us today. Um, really. Yeah, I would, I would love to come back and uh, show you all how to do. I'll, I'll, I'll very least make a blog post about it, but. Uh, because making some uh, very unique women's basketball uh, models would be an exceptional contribution that I would hope we could all do together. It'd be great. I would very much uh, love to do that. But if not, it has been excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much for all you do for the sports community, too. Have a great rest of the day, everybody. My pleasure.